challenges. Judiciary bodies to hear statements from groups of parties, individual parties, and from the observer community. As you are aware, I attach great importance to openness of the substance work. Therefore, I continue to encourage parties to keep all informal consultations open to observers wherever possible in accordance with practice and relevant SBI conclusions. Can I take it that parties agree with this approach to the organization of this session? Hearing no objections, it is so decided. I now invite parties to turn to sub item 2C, election of officers other than the chair. In accordance with rule 27 of the draft rules of procedure being applied, the substance shall elect its vice chair and rapporteur for 2023. Consultations are ongoing on nominations. I propose that we return to this sub-item at our closing plenary on Saturday, November the 12th. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. I now invite parties to turn to sub-item 2D, mandated events. Many mandated events have been scheduled in conjunction with this session. They are listed in the annotations to the provisional agenda under item 2D and also described in my scenario note. Several of the, item, the events have already taken place during the pre-sessional period. I thank delegates for engaging actively at the event. Reports of the event as relevant will be made available as soon as possible if not done already. I'm positive the deliberations and reports of the events will contrib contribute enormously to consideration of those issues this coming week. More mandated events will be organized in the coming days, such as several events under the three-year work plan of the local communities and the Indigenous Peoples Platform. Please visit the conference webpage for date, time, and venue of the event. Where mandated events are related to a specific agenda item, I will also refer to the respective events in the course of this plenary. I invite the substar to take note of this information. Thank you. I now invite parties to turn to item three, report of the adaptation committee. I would like to invite Ms. Mariam Alam, co-chair of the adaptation committee, to provide an overview of the work of the committee over the past two years. Mariam, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. I'm pleased to take the floor on behalf of the Adaptation Committee to report on the work of the committee during last year. I thank the committee, my co-chair, and the constituted bodies, organizations, and the experts that we have had the pleasure to work with for the continued good collaboration throughout the year. We have been able to undertake all activities contained in our flexible work plan for this year. And Chair, this includes, for example, the work on adaptation planning, action, and support. And here, I would like to highlight our recently issued technical paper on methodologies for assessing adaptation needs and their application, as well as our publication to help countries navigate the landscape of support for the process to formulate and implement national adaptation plans, which is complemented by an online tool. In terms of awareness raising and information sharing, the Adaptation Committee has undertaken several activities to raise the profile of adaptation and promote its implementation. Apart from our periodic Adaptation Finance Bulletin, I would like to mention a live stream we have undertaken in June entitled Shaping the Future of Climate Adaptation, which is still available on our AC webpage and being widely viewed by the wider public. Furthermore, the Adaptation Committee supports parties in implementing the Paris Agreement for example, through the draft supplementary guidance for voluntary use by parties in communicating information, which is designated to assist parties to report information on adaptation. The Adaptation Committee also contributed to the technical assessment of the first global stock take through a census report on experiences and opportunities for adaptation action and support. Lastly, Chair, I would like to report that the AC has engaged a large, a large pool of experts and relevant institutions to enhance its performance and boost collaboration. 
it initiated a dialogue with other adaptation-related constituted bodies to identify potential areas of coordination and bolster the synergy of work on adaptation under the UNFCCC. For more activities and deliverables of the AC during the last year, I invite you all to consult our report, which is contained in document FCCC slash SB slash 2022 slash 5 and addendum 1 and addendum 2. I thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Mariam, for your brief report. And I would like to commend the Adaptation Committee on its achievements made these past years. As you will recall, when we adopted the SUBSTA agenda at the outset of this meeting, I informed that the SUBSTA would consider two distinct matters under this item, the report of the Adaptation Committee and the review of the progress, effectiveness, and performance of the Adaptation Committee, which was referred by the COP and the CMA at the opening plenary meetings to the SUBSTA and SBI. To facilitate consideration of these two matters under this joint SUBSTA SBI item, the SBI Chair and I would like to propose to convene informal consultations to be co facilitated by Morgan Kioka from the United Kingdom and Pilar Bueno from Argentina. The SBI Chair and, and I will provide clear guidance to the co facilitators on how the work under this item should be organized so that the group can work in a dedicated manner towards outcomes for both matters. The outcomes of this work will be presented to the SUBSTA and the SBI at the closing plenaries on Saturday, November the 12th. I would like to thank the, um, so this is my proposal. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. I would like to thank the co-facilitators for accepting this role. The first meeting of the group is planned for tomorrow, November the 7th, at 4 p.m. in room four. However, please consult CCTV and the daily program for confirmation of date and time and details on the room number. I now invite parties to turn to item four. Glasgow Sharm el Sheikh work program on the global goal on adaptation referred to in decision 7 CMA. To facilitate consideration of the joint SUBSTA SBI item, the SBI chair and I would like to propose to convene informal consultations to be co facilitated by Matthias Frumri from Sweden and Kishan Kumar Singh from Trinidad and Tobago. The outcome of this work will be presented to the SUBSTA and the SBI at the closing plenaries on Saturday, November the 12th. Hearing no objection, it is so decided. I would like to thank the co-facilitators for accepting this role. For the details in the first meeting of the informal consultations, please consult CCTV and the daily program. As you will be aware, four workshops have been convened under the Glasgow Sharm el Sheikh work program this year, as mandated. The first three in June, August, and October, and the last one was held just yesterday as a precessional one-day workshop. The summary reports of the first three workshops are available on the GGA webpage on the UNFCCC website. The summary report on yesterday's workshop has been prepared with maximum speed and should also be available on the GGA website. The annual report is in its final stages and will be online shortly as well. The SBI Chair and I look forward to the discussions at these SB sessions, building on the fruitful in-depth exchanges at the workshops throughout the year. I now invite parties to turn to item five, report of the Executive Committee of the Warsaw International Mechanism for Loss and Damage Associated with Climate Change Impacts. I would like to invite the co-chair of the Executive Committee of the Warsaw International Mechanism for Loss and Damage, Ms. Frode Niergaard, to briefly present an update on the work of the committee. Frode, you have the floor.
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to update you on the work of the Executive Committee of the Warsaw International Mechanism for Loss and Damage Associated with Climate Change Impacts for 2022. The Executive Committee advanced its mandated work under its five strategic work streams and at this session presents the report of its progress and that of its three expert groups, a technical expert group and a task force between November 2021 and September 2022. The committee successfully held its 15th, 16th and 17th meeting in a hybrid format this year. At the 17th meeting, the committee adopted its second five-year rolling work plan. The second five-year rolling work plan defines the work to be carried out in guiding the functions of the Warsaw International Mechanism for the period 2023 to 2028. My co-chair and I are pleased to report that two of the five thematic expert groups of the committee completed their respective plans of action this year and developed a set of activities that aim to respond to the needs and concerns of developing countries in areas relating, relating to comprehensive risk management and displacement associated with climate change impacts. My co-chair and I are pleased to report that not only is the committee's new five-year rolling work plan contained in the second addendum of the 2022 report, but also the plans of actions of these two uh, groups are contained in the report. I would also like to highlight this year's few salient outputs by the committee, some of which were delivered with the assistance of its five thematic expert groups. The executive, the executive committee synthesized comprehensive information on efforts related to averting, minimizing, and addressing loss and damage associated with the adverse effects of climate change. Thereby, the executive committee is providing an information basis for the assessment of collective progress made and contributing to the ongoing technical assessment components of the first global stock take. The committee undertook work regarding support aspects to contribute to the deliberations of the new collective quantified goal by submitting its inputs in response to the invitation by the CMA as per decision 9 CMA 3. With regard to work on support aspects, the committee provided its input for consideration to the, uh, by the Standing Committee on Finance on draft guidance relating to the operating entities of the financial mechanism. The committee invited the Global Climate Fund Secretariat to two regular meetings this year in order to explore further ways to strengthen its collaboration with them. The committee also started interaction with the Secretariat of the Global Environment Facility first time this year. The Executive Committee continues to work collaboratively with other constituted bodies under the UNFCCC. This year, the committee started engaging with the consultative group of experts and decided to join force, among others, in relation to the CDE training materials and outreach event. Let me also report on the work undertaken by the committee in collaboration with the chairs of the subsidiary bodies. It includes collaborating with the SB chairs in relation to the technical workshop on the Santiago network held in May in Copenhagen with the logistical and financial assistance of the government of Denmark. It also includes cooperation between the executive committee and the chair of SBI on the first Glasgow dialogue. The inputs the committee developed for these two events were well received. Before I conclude, Mr. Chair, let me announce that the committee will hold a side event on 10 November to present its new work plan, two new plan section of its task force and technical expert group, reflecting how these can best catalyze support for implementing solutions on the ground. On behalf of the Executive Committee, I would like to thank all of those who contributed in various ways to the work of the Committee thus far. Please rest assured that the Committee will continue to count on your support and collaboration in the future. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Co-Chair. Thank you for this uh, clear update on the work of the, the committee. To facilitate consideration of this joint Substar and SBI item, the SBI Chair and I would like to propose to convene informal consultations to be co-facilitated by Cornelia Jager from Aust Austria and Lucas Di Pietro from Argentina. The outcome of this work will be presented to the Substar and the SBI at the closing plenaries on Saturday, November the 12th. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. I would like to thank the co-facilitators for accepting this role. The first meeting of the informal consultations will take place today at 5 p.m. in meeting room four. Please consult CCTV and the daily program for confirmation and details on the room number. I now invite parties to turn to item six, matters relating to the Santiago network under the Warsaw International Mechanism for Loss and Damage associated with climate change impacts. To facilitate consideration of this joint SUBSA SBI item, the SBI chair and I would like to propose to convene informal consultations to be co-facilitated by Cornelia Jager and Lucas Di Pietro. The outcome of this work will be presented to the SUBSTA and SBI at the closing plenaries on Saturday, November the 12th. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. I would like to thank the co-facilitators for accepting this role. The first meeting of the informal consultations will take place tomorrow, November the 7th, at 3 p.m. in meeting room four. Please consult CCTV and the daily program for confirmation and details on the room number. I now invite parties to turn to item seven, Cornelia Joint Work on Agriculture. To facilitate consideration of this joint substar SBI item, the SBI chair and I would like to propose to convene informal consultations to be co-facilitated by Monika Figas from Poland and Milagos Sandoval from Peru. The outcome of this work will be presented to the substar and the SBI at the closing plenaries on Saturday, November the 12th. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. I would like to thank the co-facilitators for accepting this role. The first meeting of the informal consultations will take place today at 5 p.m. in meeting room 17. Please consult CCTV and the daily program for confirmation and details on the room number. I now invite parties to turn to item eight, matters relating to the work program for urgently scaling up mitigation ambition and implementation referred to in paragraph 27 of decision 1CMA3. To facilitate consideration of this joint substar SBI item, the SBI chair and I would like to propose to convene informal consultations to be co-facilitated by Carlos Fuller from Belize and Kay Harrison from New Zealand. The outcome of this work will be presented to the Substar and the SBI at the closing plenaries on Saturday, November the 12th. Hearing no objection, it is so decided. I would like to thank the co-facilitators for accepting this role. The first meeting of the informal consultations will take place today at 5 p.m. in meeting room one. Please consult CCTV and the daily program for confirmation and details on the room number. At, yet, at yesterday's workshop, participants used the opportunity to engage over an entire day in exchanges on many aspects surrounding the mitigation work program and its implementation. The SBI chair and I urge all parties to move into the informal consultations under this item working with focus and dedication towards the draft decision that the SBs are to deliver to the CMA at this session. I now invite parties to turn to item nine, matters relating to the global stock take under the Paris Agreement. To facilitate consideration of this joint substar SBI item, the SBI chair and I would like to propose to convene a joint contact group as mandated 
to be co-chaired by Alison Campbell from the United Kingdom and Hannah Al Hashimi from the United Arab Emirates. The outcome of this work will be presented to the Substa and the SBI plenaries at the closing on Saturday, November the 12th. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. I would like to thank the co-chairs for accepting this role. For details on the first meeting of the Joint Contact Group, please consult CCTV and the daily program. As you are all aware, the work of the contact group is supported by a technical dialogue, which will be convened for its second meeting during this SB57 session, co-facilitated by Harold Winkler from South Africa and Farhan Akhtar from the United States. The opening meeting of the second dialogue is planned for Tuesday, November the 8th. Please consult CCTV and the daily program for confirmation and details on the room number. I now invite parties to turn to item 10, matters related to science and review, sub-item 10A, research and systematic observation. To facilitate consideration of this sub-item, I would like to propose to convene informal consultations to be co-chaired by Elizabeth Bush from Canada and Ladislaus Changa from Tanzania. The outcome of this work will be presented to the Substa at its closing plenary on Saturday, November the 12th. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. I would like to thank the co-facilitators for accepting this role. The first meeting of this contact group, um, you, you, sh you should consult CCTV and the daily program. I would like also to inform you that Earth Information Day 2022 will take place on Wednesday, November the 9th, from 10 to 1 p.m. in Plenary Ramses. It will be followed by the poster and the Q&A session from uh, 1.15 to 2.45 p.m. The location is to be announced. I now invite parties to turn to sub-item 10B, second periodic review of the long-term global goal under the convention and of overall progress towards achieving it. To facilitate consideration of this joint substar SBI item, the SBI chair and I would like to propose to convene a joint contact group as mandated to be co-chaired by Andrew Ferron from Luxembourg and Leon Charles from Grenada. The outcome of this work will be presented to the substar and the SBI at the closing plenaries on Saturday, November the 12th. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. I would like to thank the co-chairs for accepting this role. For the first meeting of the contact group, please consult CCTV and the daily program. I would also like to use this opportunity to thank the co-facilitators of the Structured Expert Dialogue, Tan Tara Shain and Gao Xiang, for their valuable and hard work over the past years in guiding the SED, and for the summary reports and synthesis reports they have produced. I trust that these will be of good use for parties and their work in the joint contact group just established. I now invite parties to turn to item 11, development and transfer of technologies, joint annual report of the Technology Executive Committee and the Climate Technology Center and Network. I would like to invite Mr. Ambrosio Yobanolo del Real, Chair of the Technology Executive Committee to briefly present on the work of the tech. Sir, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair, distinguished delegates. On behalf of the DC, I'm pleased to report to you on the work and achievements of the DC in 2022 in five key areas of the technology framework of the Paris Agreement. On innovation, we work on the preparation of a compilation of good practices and lessons learned in setting up and implementing national systems of innovation. 
on implementation, we produce a technical paper and a policy brief on linkages between the technology needs assessment and NDC processes, including key messages and recommendations to ECOP and the CMA. On enable environment and capacity building, we produce a technical paper on decarbonization technologies for sustainable road mobility, including key messages and recommendations to ECOP and the CMA. On collaboration and stakeholder engagement, we have continued to engage with relevant bodies under and outside the UNFCCC and the Separis Agreement, including enhanced collaboration with the Yongo as well the Gender and Women constituency. On support, we produce a technical paper and a policy brief on experience and lessons learned concerning the support provided by the GCF and the GEF for climate technologies development and transfer, including key message and recommendations to ECOP and CMA. We also continue to mainstream gender in our work. Serving the Paris Agreement, the TEC prepared a synthesis report on matters related to technology development and transfer as input to a global stock take process. We also developed the new rolling work plan of the TEC for the next five years. Last but not least, we have further strengthened our collaboration with the Climate Technology Center and Network and agree on new joint activities for 2022 and 2023 and develop for the first time a joint work program under the technology mechanism as a whole. Mr. Chair, distinguished delegates, allow me to express my sincere gratitude to all members of the TEC and its observer organizations for the valuable contributions in advancing the work on, te on technology under the tech, also to the UNFCCC Secretariat for its support, and the coacher, Stig S. Benningsen, for his co-leadership. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I now would, would also like to invite Mr. Omedi Jura, the Chair of the Advisory Board of the Climate Technology Center and Network, to update us on the work of the CTCN. Uh, Mr. Omedi Jura, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. On behalf of the UN Climate Technology Center and Network, serving as the chair of its advisory board, I take this opportunity to give a brief update of the progress of the CTCN. I thank my fellow advisory board members for their cooperation and support Included is the Vice Chair, Mr. Erin Ross, from the United States of America. In 2022, the CTCN continued supporting the development of institutional capacities to identify, disseminate, and develop analytical tools and policies for the uptake of climate technologies. Till now, CTCN has addressed a total of 360 technical assistance requests from 109 developing country parties. The memorandum of understanding between the Conference of the Parties and the United Nations Environment Program regarding the hosting of the CTCN was also renewed for a further five-year period. The CTCN developed its third program of work for 2023 to 2027. The program of work is aligned to the technology framework of the Paris Agreement and follows a country-driven approach while introducing a focus on five areas of system transformation, this being water, energy, food nexus, buildings and infrastructure, sustainable mobility, energy systems, and business and industry, as well as key enablers of technology transfer that include digitalization and national systems of innovation. The CTCN and the tech also developed a joint work program in the period as has already been reported by the tech chair. The CTCN facilitated a wide range of innovations and collaborations, including the continuation 
of work on gender and technology with the UNFCCC Women and Gender Constituency and fostering endogenous technology development through the Youth Climate Innovation Labs. With support from the Republic of Korea, the CTCN launched a partnership and liaison office in Songdo, South Korea, in July to enhance linkages between the technology mechanism and the financial mechanism. Countries are increasingly seeking CTCN support to utilize their Green Climate Fund Readiness and Preparatory Support Program allocation. 30 Green Climate Fund Readiness proposals implemented by the CTCN have been approved to date, totaling almost 10 million US dollars. The CTCN has continued to manage the Adaptation Fund's 5 million US dollar Climate Innovation Accelerator Program alongside UNDP. The CTCN and the Global Environment Facility Challenge Program for Adaptation Innovation was launched in the period. Finally, the CTCN continues to make efforts towards predictable and sustainable sources of finance as identified in the independent reviews in order to meet rising demand and enhance delivery of CTCN services to support uh, developing uh, countries in implementing their commitment under the Paris Agreement. Here again, Chair, I want to thank the partners who have supported the CTCN financially and in other ways. And I also support the uh, uh, thank the Secretariat for their support, uh, stakeholders in general, and I here would like to invite you all to visit the CTCN website for more details. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Moses. Uh, I would like to thank the chairs and vice chairs of the Tech and CTCN Advisory Board for their leadership in conducting the work of these bodies and extend my thanks to the members of the Tech and the CTCN and the collaborating observer organizations for their work and the achievements made during the past year. To facilitate consideration of this joint subsidized BI item, the SBI Chair and I would like to propose to convene informal consultations to be co-facilitated by Elfriede Moore from Austria and Stella Gama from Malawi. The outcome of this work will be presented to the Substar and the SBI at the closing plenaries on Saturday, November the 12th. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. I would like to thank the co-facilitators for accepting this role. The first meeting of the informal consultations will take place tomorrow, November the 7th, at 3 p.m. in meeting room three. Please consult CCTV and the daily program for confirmation and details on the room number. I now invite parties to turn to item 12, matters relating to the forum on the impact of the implementation of response measures serving the Convention, the Kyoto Protocol, and the Paris Agreement. I would now like to invite Ms. Catherine Goldberg, co-chair of the Katowice Committee of Experts on the Impacts of the Implementation of Response Measures, to provide a brief update of the KCS work. Catherine, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for the opportunity to take the floor on behalf of the Katowice Committee of Experts on the impacts of the implementation of response measures, the KCI, to, prevent, to present a brief update on our work. I would also like to thank the committee members and my co-chair, Peter Govindasamy from Singapore, for their collegiality and good collaboration throughout the year. The KCI met twice in 2022 to advance and deliver on our work plan activities, which were agreed as part of the work plan of the Response Measures Forum and its KCI at COP25 in Madrid. The KCI has been quite productive this year. In particular, we concluded 
two work plan activities and made significant progress on five other activities. Several substantive products have been delivered or are in the pipeline for delivery quite soon. There are many important outcomes from the KCI's work this year, and I would like to highlight three of our deliverables. First, as the output of activity two from our work plan, the KCI prepared a compilation of concrete examples of country-driven strategies and best practices on just transition of the workforce and economic diversification. Second, the committee produced a technical paper which looks into the socioeconomic impacts of new industries and businesses resulting from the implementation of response measures and the related opportunities and challenges. And third, the KCI produced a second technical paper which examines the impacts of the implementation of response measures taking into account intergenerational equity, gender considerations, and the needs of local communities, indigenous peoples, youth, and other people in vulnerable situations. I'm also pleased to highlight that the KCI finalized its 2021 to 2022 annual report at our meeting last week. The report is contained in document FCCC slash SB slash 2022 slash six. It contains information on the KCI's fifth, sixth, and seventh meetings, as well as possible recommendations for consideration by the Response Measures Forum as part of the outcomes of activities conducted by the committee. Lastly, I would like to thank the experts, practitioners, and observer organizations who have contributed to the work of the committee and to delivery of these outcomes. The KCI is looking forward to continuing the important work outlined in our work plan, as well as continuing to collaborate with parties, other constituted bodies, and other stakeholders. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Katrin. Um, thanks to all members of the KCI for the hard work this year, including here in Sharm el Sheikh, just prior to this session. To facilitate consideration of this joint subsidized SBI item, the SBI Chair and I would like to propose to convene a contact group as mandated for the Response Measures Forum to be co-chaired by Andre Marku from Papua New Guinea and Daniel Waterscott from the EU. The outcome of this work will be presented to the Substar and the SBI at the closing plenaries on Saturday, November the 12th. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. I would like to thank the co-chairs the, the, the co for accepting this role. The first meeting of the contact group will take place tomorrow, November the 7th, at 4 p.m. in meeting room five. Please consult CCTV and the daily program for confirmation and details on the room number. I also draw attention to, the technical, to a technical session to implement work plan activities five and 11 of the Response Measures Forum, which is taking place today from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. in meeting room six. We look forward to your participation and your engagement. Let us now turn to item 13, methodological issues under the convention and its sub-items. First, I invite parties to turn to sub-item 13A, training program for review experts for the technical review of greenhouse gas inventories of parties included in Annex 1 to the Convention. To facilitate consideration of this sub-item, I would like to propose to convene informal consultations to be co-facilitated by Harry Vrolz from Netherlands and Jai Jung from Republic of Congo. Uh, Korea, I'm sorry. The outcome of this work will be presented to the substar at its closing plenary on Saturday, November the 12th. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. I would like to uh, thank Harry and Jay uh, for accepting this role. The first meeting of the informal consultations will take place tomorrow, November the 7th, at 3 p.m. in meeting room 17. Please consult CCTV and the daily program for confirmation and details on the room number. 
Next, I invite parties to turn to sub item 13B, training program for review experts for the technical review of biennial reports and national communications of parties included in Annex 1 to the Convention. To facilitate consideration of this sub item, I would like to propose to convene informal consultations to be co-facilitated by Harry Vrules and Jay Jung. The outcome of this work will be presented to the substar at its closing plenary on Saturday, November the 12th. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. And I would like to thank the co-facilitators for also accepting this role. The first meeting of the informal consultations um, please consult CCTV and the daily program for details on the room number. I now invite parties to turn to sub item 13C, revision of the UNFCCC reporting guidelines on annual inventories for parties included in Annex 1 to the Convention. To facilitate consideration of this sub item, I would like to propose to convene informal consultations to be co-facilitated by Daniela Romano from Italy and Thiago Mendes from Mozambique. The outcome of this work will be presented to the Substar at its closing plenary on Saturday, November the 12th. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. I would like to thank the co-facilitators for accepting this role. The first meeting of the informal consultations will take place today at 4 p.m in meeting room 17. Please consult CCTV and the daily program for confirmation and details on the room number. I now invite parties to turn to sub item 13D, common metrics to calculate the carbon dioxide equivalents of greenhouse gases. To facilitate consideration of this sub item, I would like to propose to convene informal consultations to be co-facilitated by Camila Lambarca from Chile and Marina Vitulo from Italy. The outcome of this work will be presented to the Substar at its closing plenary on Saturday, November the 12th. Hearing no objections, it is so decided, and I would like to thank the co-facilitators for accepting this role. The first meeting of the informal consultations will take place tomorrow, November the 7th, at 5 p.m. in meeting room five. Please consult CCTV and the daily program for confirmation and details on the room number. I now invite parties to turn to sub item 13E, emissions from fuel used for international aviation and maritime transport. The Secretariat of the International Civil Aviation Organization and International Maritime Organization have made voluntary submissions on the ongoing work in relation to addressing emissions from fuel used for international aviation and maritime transport in contributing to the substance work on this matter in accordance with decision 4 CP1 paragraph 2. Opportunity for oral statements on the ongoing work will be given when we hear statements by intergovernmental organizations towards the end of the sub substance plenary. To facilitate consideration of this sub item, I would like to propose to convene informal consultations to be co-facilitated by Martin, Martin Kamps from Germany and Pacifica Acheng Ogola from Kenya. The outcome of this work will be presented to the Substar at its closing plenary on Saturday, November the 12th. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. I would like to thank the co-facilitators for accepting this role. The first meeting of the informal consultations will take place tomorrow, November the 7th, at 1 p.m. in meeting room five. Please consult CCTV and the daily program for confirmation and details on the room number. I now invite parties to turn to item 14, matters relating to reporting and review under article 13 of the Paris Agreement, options for conducting reviews on a voluntary basis of the information reported pursuant to Chapter 4 of the Annex to Decision 18 CMA 1 and respective training courses needed to facilitate these voluntary reviews. To facilitate consideration of this item, I would like to propose to convene informal consultations to be co-facilitated by Julia Gardiner from Austria and Yamika 
J.D. Idris from Malawi. The outcome of this work will be presented to Substar at its closing plenary on Saturday, November the 12th. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. I would like to thank the co-facilitators for accepting this role. For the first meeting of the informal consultations, please consult CCTV and the daily program. Let me also note at this point that there are various events related to the Enhanced Transparency Framework, the ETF, being organized at this session. This includes two events on the activities mandated by Decision 5 CMA 3, at which the Secretariat will inform parties on the progress in the development of tools for electronic reporting and of the training program for technical experts under the ETF. These events are planned back to back for November the 10th, starting at 1.15 p.m. In addition, the Secretariat will hold an event on expanding review expert resources under the ETF as a dialogue with National Focal Point, planned for November the 11th at 1.15 p.m. in room Osiris. I invite all interested delegates to attend. I now invite parties to turn to item 15, guidance on cooperative approaches referred to in Article 6, Paragraph 2 of the Paris Agreement and in Decision 2 CMA 3. To facilitate consideration of this item, I would like to propose to convene informal consultations to be co-facilitated by Kuki Sujak Mohan from Indonesia and Pierre Stjansen from Norway. The outcome of this work will be presented to the Substar at its closing plenary on Saturday, 12 November. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. I would like to thank the co-facilitators for accepting this role. The first meeting of these informal consultations will take place today at 4 p.m. in meeting room two. Please consult CCTV and daily program for confirmation and details on the room number. Let me also recall at this point that considerable intersessional work was done on the agenda items since our last session in June, including submissions, technical papers prepared by the Secretariat, as well as virtual and in-person workshops. Based on these inputs and activities, and as mandated at our last session, I prepared an informal document that was published two weeks ago, named Substar 57 slash a6.2 inf doc. As requested, this document includes textual proposals which parties may wish to consider in developing recommendations for consideration and adoption by the CMA. I now invite parties to turn to item 16, rules, modalities, and procedures from the mechanism established by Article 6, Paragraph 4 of the Paris Agreement and referred to in decision 3 CMA 3. To facilitate consideration of this item, I would like to propose to convene informal consultations to be co-facilitated by Ms. Kate Hancock from Australia and Mr. Sonam Tashi from Bhutan. The outcome of this work will be presented to the Substar at its closing plenary on Saturday, November the 12th. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. I would like to thank the co-facilitators for accepting this role. The first meeting of the informal consultations will take place today at 5 p.m. in meeting room two. Please consult CCTV and daily program for confirmation and details on the room number. Similarly to the previous item, considerable intersessional work was undertaken since Substar 56, including submissions, technical papers, and workshops. As mandated, I also prepared an informal document published as Substar 57 slash A6.4 slash inf doc, which include textual proposals. I trust that parties will find these proposals helpful and encourage all parties to work swiftly towards a draft decision to be recommended to CMA4. I now invite parties to turn to item 17, work program under the framework for non-market approaches referred to in Article 6, Paragraph 8 of the Paris Agreement and in Decision 4, CMA 3. For, consider for consideration of this item, I intend to convene 
the second meeting of the Glasgow Committee on Non-Market Approaches, which will operate as a contact group as per its mandate. Accordingly, I propose to convene the Glasgow Committee as a contact group and invite Maria Al-Jishi from Saudi Arabia and Jacqueline uh, Ruska from New Zealand to facilitate this work. The outcome of, the, of this work will be presented to the Substa at its closing plenary on Saturday, November the 12th. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. I would like to thank the co-chairs for accepting this role. The first meeting of the contact group will take place tomorrow, November the 7th, at 1 p.m. in meeting room 6. Please consult CCTV and daily program for confirmation and details on the room number. Again, as Substar 56 requested, I prepared an informal document including textual proposals published as Substar 57 slash A6.8 slash inf doc and trust that parties will find those useful in working towards the draft decision to be recommended to the CMA4 at the end of this week. I now invite parties to turn to item 18, annual report on the technical reviews beginning with sub-item 18A, technical review of information reported under the convention by parties included in Annex 1 to the convention in their biannual reports and national communications. As usual, the Secretary had prepared an annual report containing information on the composition of expert reviews teams, the conclusions of the latest meeting of lead reviewers of biannual reports and national communications, and the latest information on the technical review of information related to the biannual reports and national communications reported under the convention by Annex 1 parties. I now invite the Substar to take note of the information document FCCC slash Substar slash 2022 slash INF 2. In the report on the session, it will be reflected that the Substar took note of this information. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. I now invite parties to turn to sub-item 18B, technical review of greenhouse gas inventories of parties included in Annex 1 to the Convention. As announced in my scenario note, I propose the Substar to defer consideration of this agenda sub-item to its 58th session. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. Okay, it seems like there was a request uh, for the floor before uh I, uh, I gaveled, so let me uh, recognize, uh, I believe, Ukraine, which is indicated here as United Arab Emirates, but I think it's Ukraine. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, distinguished delegates. On substance agenda item 18B, Ukraine welcomes the proposal by the Chair to defer the consideration of the agenda item to the next session. For over eight years and last eight months, Ukraine is fighting unprecedented full-scale war launched by terroristic state of Russia against Ukraine. This immoral war in the heart of Europe is the war against Ukrainian nation, Ukrainian people, Ukrainian economy, and the very self of Ukrainian identity. This war already having irreversible consequences for Ukraine, for Europe, and the world. This war is also undermining the integrity of the Convention and the Paris Agreement. Illegal temporary occupation of Ukrainian territories undermines the reliability of reporting data and all consequent UNFCC reports. Ukraine reiterates its raising concerns over reliability of reporting data under UNFCC 
and stresses the need to address the robustness of transparency of reporting as a matter of crucial importance. We will need to address it once the peace, the territorial integrity of Ukraine is restored. I thank you, Chair. Okay, uh, th thank you, Ukraine, for your statement. I now invite parties to turn to sub-item 18C, technical review of greenhouse gas inventories and other information reported by parties included in Annex 1, as defined in Article 1, Paragraph 7 of the Kyoto Protocol. The Secretariat prepared an annual report containing the latest information on the technical review of greenhouse gas inventories and other information reported by Annex 1 parties as defined in Article 1, Paragraph 7 of the Kyoto Protocol. The report also includes information on the review of the report to facilitate the calculation of the assigned amount for the second commitment period pursuant to Article 3, Paragraphs 7 bis, 8 and 8 bis of the Kyoto Protocol. I now invite the SUBSTA to take note of the information document FCCC slash SUBSTA slash 2022 slash INF4. In the report of the session, it will be reflected that the SUBSTA took note of this information. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. I now invite parties to turn to item 19 of the agenda. Other matters. Are there any other matters that parties may wish to raise? I see no request for the floor. Thank you. Dear delegates, let me now open the floor to listen to statements from the intergovernmental organizations on Substar-related matters. I would now like to invite IGOs to provide oral reports, which will be limited to two minutes. I insist, two minutes. First, I would like to invite Mr. Abdallah Moxis from the Secretariat of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change to provide a statement. Abdallah, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, dear uh, Chair. Distinguished delegates, let me start by thanking the government of Egypt for the excellent hosting arrangement of, for this COP. The NFCCC Secretariat for the excellent collaboration with the IPCC, including through the joint IPCC NFCCC working group, which continues to be a very effective mechanism for successful partnership be between IPCC and NFCCC. The IPCC Bureau and TFI Bureau, as well as all IPCC authors who have delivered a very comprehensive package of information during the sixth cycle, known as the most challenging and ambitious one in the history of the IPCC. And both IPCC parent organization, the World Meteorological Organization, and the United Nations Environment Program for their continuous support to IPCC. Ladies and gentlemen, the IPCC is coming to this COP with a very rich program, which we call a toolbox for the delegates for informing their decision at this COP. I am pleased to inform you that the IPCC chair, the vice chairs, co-chairs, and many authors will provide inputs to many COP27 events, including the following. On 8 November, IPCC Working Group 2 will deliver its funding for the contribution 
for his contribution to six cycle. And SBI and SEPSTA special events on the same day, the three working groups will present gender-related aspects for climate change. IPCC scientists will take part in the Earth Information Day on 9 November and also contribute to a series of roundtable round and poster se session of the second global stock take technical dialogue from 7 to 11 November. IPCC Working Group 3 co-chairs are invited to inform the discussion of a mandated high-level ministerial roundtable or on pre-2030 ambition on the 14th November. Together with the Secretary of NFTRPC, the IPCC Task Force on, on National Green Gas Inventories will launch the new generation of IPCC inventory software at an official side event on 9 November. The IPCC through the chair and vice chair will be deeply involved in the science day scheduled 14 November. The IPCC together with WMO and partner will also run a pavilion called Science for Climate Action with a rich program of scientific events in Blue Zone which is available in our website. Please visit our website. We, deal, we, we believe our program and presence will assist many of you with the knowledge required to inform your decisions here in Sharm el-Sheikh. We are looking forward to welcome you there. Ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude by informing you that the six assessment package is almost complete. And the final package will be finalized by early next year, ready for first global stock, stock take and COP28. What we were delivered, uh, a task for six cycle will be delivered. Last but not least, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the governments that have provided financial, scientific, communication support to the IPCC. And I am inviting those who have not done so yet join us. We are welcoming you, you to put your name in the IPCC venture. I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Abdallah, for giving us an update on the work of the IPCC. I would now like to give the floor to Mr. Stéphane Payet from France to make a statement for the Committee on Earth Observation Satellites. Dear Mr. Payet, you have the floor. Merci, merci Monsieur le, le Président de, de me donner la parole. Je vais passer à, à l'anglais pour être compris de, de mes collègues délégués. So I take the floor on behalf of the Committee on Earth Observation Satellites, CEOs, and the Coordination Group for Meteorological Satellites, CGMS. And I'm pleased to provide this annual update to the 57th session of the subsidiary body for scientific and technological advice. On the joint CEOs, CGM's response to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change needs for systematic Earth observations as identified by the UN Global Climate Observing System. So CEOs and CGM's international organizations of 63 members and associates and 16 members respectively coordinate through its joint working group on climate space agency activities that advance the systematic observation of the Earth's climate systems by implementing the architecture for climate monitoring from space. The joint working group on climate coordinates these activities in part through its updated inventory addressing the GSO's essential climate variables. GAP analyzes on this inventory allow to inform planning for Earth observation missions and data product generation also to ensure continuity in the future. 
Substantial input to the GCO's implementation plan update had been identified from such kind of gap analysis. Taking advantage from the data and measurement capacity, the agencies fully support the implementation of the Paris Agreement, including mitigation and adaptation objectives. In particular, it encompasses the development of a space-based constellation for monitoring carbon dioxide and methane, which led to the implementation of a roadmap for greenhouse gas monitoring and verification system that supports the transparency framework. National determine the contributions and global stock take. A first prototype system has been developed to inform the first stock take with, with use cases on top down carbon dioxide and methane estimations. A flown system integrates satellite data into a sustainable atmospheric greenhouse gas monitoring and verification system to support future global stock take in 2028 and beyond. In parallel, CO space agencies are also developing a roadmap for providing satellite products that supports modeling needs. And in addition, emission reporting by the parties to the UNFCCC from agriculture, forestry, and other land use. To address overall system implementation goals, the agencies continue to coordinate their activities with other stakeholders such as WMO, relevant modeling centers and maintain partnerships with national emission inventory and policy users communities. To this end, the space agencies of CEOs and CGMs have submitted to UNFCCC with other organizations a synthesis report on the role of systematic Earth observations in the global stock take. The agencies will support the further development of Earth observation goals in the frame of UNFCCC and the Paris Agreement. Finally, the agencies continuously implements its strategies to support the global stock take of the UNFCCC and Paris Agreement encompassing all of the above described measures in support of mitigation and adaptation goals. The agencies highly welcome early engagement with the parties to ensure the planned products and services are satisfactory. Parties are also invited to continue supporting the activities of the space agencies. Thanks for listening. Oui, merci, Monsieur Payet. Thank you for this update. Uh, I now would like to invite Mr. Hans Dolman from the Global Climate Observing System, GICOS, to take the floor. Thank you, Chairman. Climate observations are fundamental in the development of scientific assessments and policies, including the IPCC reports and the 2015 Paris Agreement. They are the foundation of our understanding of the climate and how to mitigate climate change, adapt to future conditions, and reduce and address future loss and damage. In October 2022, GECOS published its latest implementation plan for the Global Observing System for Climate and the revised observational requirements for their essential climate variables. The implementation plan identifies the major practical actions to be undertaken in the next five to 10 years. These are categorized across six themes, ensuring the sustainability of key observational programs and identifying areas of immediate concern, filling data gaps in observing capabilities addressing areas where observations are consistently deficient, most notably parts of Africa, South America, Southeast Asia, and in the deep ocean and polar regions. Improving data quality, availability, and utility. Improving data management to ensure the free and unrestricted access to climate data and its long-term curation. Improving engagement with countries from the UNFCCC and others, stakeholders, identifying needs and sources of support, and addressing other emergent needs, such as more detailed observation for adaptation and mitigation, for example, the development of a global greenhouse gas observing system. These actions urgently require adequate support, 
and long-term investment from governments, operational agencies, funders, and research organizations. GECOS recently organized its second climate observation conference in Darmstadt in Germany that called for the establishment of a global goal on observation under the UNFCCC. This global goal on observations should guide an action-oriented framework for observation. This is necessary to provide a sustainable, funded, long-term global observing system to underpin mitigation and adaptation action and reporting and assist recognition, understanding and coordination of activities by international, regional and national stakeholders. Observations remain fundamental to the value chain of scientific knowledge and activities that support our understanding of our current and future environment and decisions on sustainable development. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Dolman. I would now like to invite Mr. Vladimir Ryabinin from Intergovernmental Ocean Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO. Mr. Ryabinin, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished participants, all courtesies observed, Ocean science and sustainable ocean management are at the core mission of the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO, or simply IOC. The ocean is at the heart of climate change, storing most of the excess heat and absorbing a major portion of the greenhouse gas emissions. In doing so, the ocean has slowed the temperature rise in the atmosphere, but its ability to continue to provide this invaluable service is in doubt. And in absorbing carbon dioxide, the ocean has become less alkaline, which already, uh, uh, with already visible and potentially devastating consequences of the ocean acidification for important ecosystems. The ocean is also at the heart of systematic monitoring of the climate system. The IUC-led Global Ocean Observing System is an integral part of the global climate observing system and of its implementation plan which this body will consider at this session. IUC fully supports the plan and stands ready to coordinate implementation of the actions that call on the IUC member states. The ocean can also be at the heart of the climate solutions and sustainable development. This is why the IUC has been assigned by United Nations General Assembly to lead the United Nations Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development, 2021-2030. One major challenge of the ocean decade is to unlock ocean-based solutions to climate change. At the same time, sustainably managing this important resource for all humanity. We invite you to join this effort and to invest in ocean science for climate. Benefits from the new generation of solutions, for example, climate smart maritime special planning, will be accruing in the ocean climate nexus, conservation of biodiversity, sustainable ocean economy, including in reducing poverty. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Yabinin. I now turn to Mr. Detlef Stammer from the World Climate Research Program to make his statement. Mr. Stammer, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. It's actually not Detlef Stammer. It's uh, Mike Sparham, the head of the WCRP Secretariat. The World Climate Research Program, or WCRP, is taking the lead in ensuring that the climate research community creates the scientific foundation required to meet the urgent demand for robust and useful climate information. WCRP contributes to the development of policies and operationally focused climate services and advises on the definition of requirements for the observing system, which are set by the Global Climate Observing System, GCOS. WCRP's coupled model into comparison project, CMIP, provides the future climate trajectories used by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change Planning for the next phase, CMIP-7, is well underway. Building on CMIP, the Coordinated Regional Downscaling Experiment, or CORDEX, is WCRP's modeling framework to produce regional climate information. 
It is the basis for the climateinformation.org service, supported by the Green Climate Fund and others, that provides the climate science basis for climate adaptation and mitigation activities. As well as current foci, WCRP is also investing effort in several new activities that will gather momentum over the next few years. As one example, WCRP will address major science gaps in understanding and predicting precipitation in a changing climate through the international leadership and coordination of a global precipitation experiment, GPEX. WCRP's community stands ready to work with our partners and to support nations to ensure that society has the climate knowledge and information needed to meet the challenges of our changing climate. To achieve this, we rely on countries to provide long-term support for fundamental science, model development, and a sustained climate observing system. Finally, we would like to invite you to our next major WCRP Open Science Conference, Advancing Climate Science for a Sustainable Future, that will be held in Kigali, Rwanda, on the 23rd to 27th of October, 2023. Thank you, Chair. Thank you uh, to WCRP for this uh, statement. Uh, let me now uh, turn to our last uh, speaker. Let, let me now turn to Mr. Johan Stander of the World Meteorological Organization. Mr. Stander, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairperson, distinguished delegates. The World Meteorological Organization, along with the co-sponsored bodies, the IPCC, the Global Climate Observing System, and the World Climate Research Program, continues working to contribute to scientific information to the negotiations process. The global mean temperature from January to September this year has been 1.15 degrees above the 19, 1850 to 1900 levels. On a decadal time scale, the temperature was 1.09 degrees higher. If the current anomaly continues, 2022 will end up as the fifth or sixth warmest year on record since 1850. 2015 to 2022 are likely to be the eighth warmest years um, on record all of them warmer than any year prior to 2015. Early warning systems for severe weather hydrological, hydrometeorological events are a critical element of adaptation to a changing climate. The WMO is spearheading a UN-wide initiative to ensure that every person on Earth is protected by early warning systems within um, five years as declared by the UN Secretary General. An executive um, action plan has been developed and will be launched at COP tomorrow, proposing solutions for closing the gaps in main elements of the early warning value cycle. Greenhouse gases are driving the changes to the climate and then remain aspects of the land, atmosphere, ocean interactions that are poorly characterized. WMO is collaborating with broader greenhouse gas community, is developing a transparent international coordinated monitoring framework to strengthen information bases for critical decisions on climate mitigation. Systematic observations is the foundation of our understanding of climate change and supports decisions on climate change actions and sustainable development. Recognizing this, the WMO and its partners are advocating for adaptation or adoption by parties of a global goal on observations as a means to implement the parties' agreement objective to strengthen systematic observations um, of the climate system. Last but not least, Chair, WMO, together with nine UN entities and the Global Water Partnership, have launched the Water and Climate Coalition to catalyze actions to strengthen global water information services that provide status assessment and outlooks for climate smart water related um, decisions. Water and climate change are inseparable, and we must tackle them as one. On behalf of the WMO, we thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Stander, for this message. Uh, on behalf of WMO, we have two more speakers, uh, Mr. Honders on behalf of IMO, and Ms. Uh, Hoop on behalf of uh, IKO. So I will now like to invite Mr. Roel Honders from the International Maritime Organization to make a statement. Mr. Honders, you have the floor. 
On the 1st of November of this year, so less than one week ago, a comprehensive new set of binding IMO measures designed to deliver on IMO's commitment to reduce carbon intensity of the global shipping fleet by 40% by 2030 entered into force. These mandatory IMO measures directly regulate greenhouse gas emissions of the over 32,000 merchant ships ensuring global trade. Compliance by the global shipping industry with these IMO measures will be enforced in every port around the world regardless of their ownership, trade or registration of the ship. More work is on the way as IMO is making substantial progress in developing its next set of greenhouse gas reduction measures which will put the global shipping industry on an ambitious pathway towards decarbonisation. Negotiations between governments in the IMO on concrete proposals for a basket of greenhouse gas reduction measures which will consist of both technical and carbon pricing elements have already started and will continue next month in our Marine Environment Protection Committee. IMO has also initiated the revision of its 2018 initial greenhouse gas strategy with the revised IMO strategy to contain new strengthened greenhouse gas reduction targets for the global shipping industry towards mid-century as well as possible intermediate milestones. Decarbonization of international shipping is a priority issue for the IMO and IMO member states are committed to adopt a revised, strengthened IMO greenhouse gas strategy by July 2023. Decarbonizing international shipping will require the uptake of low carbon marine fuels and it's paramount for the IMO to ensure the availability, accessibility and affordability of low carbon fuels for the shipping industry in all parts of the world. Therefore, in parallel to our work as a global regulator, IMO actively works with partners within the UN family and the private sector on supporting states, in particular developing states, on reinforcing collaboration with the energy and the port sectors to further develop capacity in infrastructure in renewable energy production, which can also serve the global shipping industry. In this way, IMO ensures that the decarbonization of shipping creates opportunities for all and leaves nobody behind, and concretely, Chair, IMO, together with UNCTAD, the World Bank and IRENA, organizes a side event on Thursday, the 10th of November, on exploring opportunities for developing countries in renewable fuel production for the shipping industry. And we hope you will join us in that event. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Mr. Hunders, and uh, I will do my best to join and attend the side event, and I hope uh, many people will. Uh, now, last but not least, uh, I would like to invite Ms. Jane Hoop, Special Envoy of the Secretary General of the International Civil Aviation Organization, uh, to make a statement on behalf of ICAO. Uh, Ms. Hoop, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. ICAO continues to lead the global efforts to address international aviation and climate change while the sector is building back better in a post-pandemic environment. Close cooperation among all aviation stakeholders remains key to taking full advantage of the innovations needed for a green transition over the next decades. I'm pleased to inform that ICAO Assembly, held just a month ago, reached a historic agreement on a global aspirational goal for international aviation of net zero carbon emissions by 2050 in support of the Paris Agreement's temperature goal. ICAO and its member states will work together with the industry, civil society, and other stakeholders to strive to achieve this collective long-term goal while recognizing that each state's special circumstances and respective capabilities will inform the ability of each state to contribute within its own national framework. Achieving net zero carbon emissions by 2050 will require substantial investment and financing and putting in place concrete means of implementation for developing countries and states having particular needs. In this regard, ICAO has already launched its assistance, capacity building and training for sustainable aviation fuels, ACT-SAF program, to provide tailored support to states on cleaner energy development and deployment and facilitate partnerships and cooperation around the world. The ICAO Assembly also reaffirmed the continuous commitment of states to implement ICAO's Global Carbon Offsetting and Reduction Scheme for International Aviation, CORSIA, 
while putting in place necessary adjustments to the scheme baseline and other design elements for future phases with a view to maintaining the necessary and delicate balance among the design elements as well as the scheme's integrity and level of ambition. IKEA will continue to follow up Article 6 of the Paris Agreement, in particular, any implications for Corsia and its eligible emissions units. Mr. Chair, IKEA is fully cognizant of the challenges associated with addressing the impacts of international aviation on the global climate, and all stakeholders in the aviation ecosystems have to play their part. IKEA remains fully committed in leading the sector's efforts towards supporting the temperature goal of the Paris Agreement. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Hoop. Um, thank you, dear colleagues. Uh, this brings us to the end of this opening plenary. We have uh, launched uh, work on all items. Uh, I look forward to the significant outcomes that we will uh, receive at the closing plenary on Saturday, November the 12th. And I assure you of my dedicated support in the coming days. We will meet again later for the joint plenary of the governing and subsidiary bodies to hear statements from groups of parties, parties and NGO observers. The joint plenary will be convened upon completion of the SBI opening plenary. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>